December 1973. I am still in jail and have been since May. I am still held in solitary. Kamal, another revolutionary brother and I, are up on an alleged armed robbery charge meant to have taken place in the Bronx in 1972. With nothing to lose, we order our lawyers to say nothing, electing to speak for ourselves. As soon as the jury panel enters, Kamal starts. You all need to know this judge has been appointed by Nixon and is persecuting us solely for our political beliefs. That this is the same judge who just gave the Watergate defendants, who don't have a fraction of the valid we'll reasons we do for an adjournment. Board. He just gave them an extended postponement. The marshals are so gung-ho, some brutalizers right here in open court. The spectators and supporters did not come to see this. Kamau and I are locked into this freezing cold side room, banned from the court, listening to our farce of a trial via speakers. But having been in solitary for months, I have forgotten how to communicate. The farce of a trial drags on for days. Gradually, we speak of things. Locked in that freezing room together with no guard, I slowly let down my guard. It's clear to us both that our relationship is changing. Revolutionaries, comrades, friends, physical. Hung jury. We got a hung jury. A lone black juror refused to convict, seeing jury. the corruption taking place. We didn't do the robbery because we were never there. And the Queen's Bank robbery charges? Sundiata and myself are acquitted completely. The FBI's fabricated evidence has put us in jail, but their false cases against us are falling apart. I am returned to solitary confinement to wait for my trial of the attempted murder of a state trooper. This is not a hotel, Jesse Mard. You are sadly mistaken if you think this is that. You have been with us long enough to know the procedure. Now, Get up. I've seen women sleep their whole sentence away with depression. Get up. My nerves are terrible. I eat like prison food is going out of style. I feel fragile, sick, I am sick, and scared this is happening to me. Months later, a motorcade transfers me to hospital, and police stay surrounding it. Two policewomen are inside the labor room at all times with several armed police outside. A demo takes place in support of my right to have Dr. Garrett deliver my baby. 4 a.m., September 11, 1974, Kukuya Amala Alugbala Shakur is born into this world. A peaceful, beautiful birth, a beautiful, beautiful baby girl. I hold her, caress her, kiss her, smell her, breastfeed her. My child, my child, my love. Handcuffed to a stretcher in the back of an ambulance, I'm driven back to Rikers Jail. My breasts full, my arms empty. You know the drill, stay here for examination. Chessie Maud, you will stay here for examination. Hey! Hey, where you going? Chessie Maud, assistance, I need assistance. Get her down! Get her down! I got her! I am beaten to the floor. On the floor, I am chained by my arms and legs, then dragged to solitary. No sanitary napkins, no means to clean myself. A mattress, no bed, and no shower. I refuse food. I am so weak, I faint. You were charged with armed robbery of a bank in Queens on a date August 23rd, 1971. A trial in 1976, I'm acquitted. You were charged with robbery of the Hilton Hotel, New York City on April 5th, 1971. A trial in 1976, the case is dismissed. You were charged with bank robbery in the Bronx on September 1st, 1972. A trial in 1973, a hung jury was returned. At the retrial, I am acquitted. December 28th, 1972. 
You were charged with kidnapping in New York. In my 1975 trial, I am acquitted. The FBI's COINTELPRO and police are trying their damnedest to get me on any charge. You were charged with murder in New York, January 2nd, 1973. In 1974, the case is dismissed. May 2nd, 1973, you were accused of the murder of State Trooper Forster on the New Jersey Turnpike. I've been in prison for four years. Solitary confinement for two years. My treatment has been raised with the UN. I am still held in the basement of Middlesex County Men's Jail and my child is growing up without me. This trial begins January 17th, 1977. And have you heard about this case? Yes, Judge, I have. And as a prospective juror, do you feel you have already formed an opinion as to the guilt or innocence of this defendant? I would think that she was guilty, yeah. You feel that she's guilty? Yes. Do you feel that you could sit and listen to the evidence and judge it impartially? Yeah, I probably could, depending on the evidence and all that. The final all-white jury includes two friends, one girlfriend and two nephews of New Jersey State Troopers, sitting on this trial for the alleged murder of a New Jersey State Trooper. Our team has no money. Lawyers work unpaid. Amazing teams of students give their time and energy petitioning, demonstrating men and phones. Harry Belafonte, Ozzy Davis, and Ruby Dee perform at fundraisers. Angela Davis and Amiri Baraka work hard to educate the people about what's happening in New Jersey, but years of rotten away in solitary confinement are taking their toll on me. I found a great investigator who owes me a favor. This guy has contacts in the New Jersey State Police and thinks he may have come up with some intel on their main witness, Trooper Harper. Stanley Cohen, part of my defense team. He's making progress finding a forensic chemist who will actually work with us, seeing as none of the others will, being associated with police departments. Stanley. We also feel that at least some of the scientific reports have been fudged, and there's something else I want to check out. What? Wait, what is hold it? on a few more days. What I don't want is to get your hopes up prematurely. Just a couple more days and I'll have more. A couple days pass, then a couple more. Stanley is found dead at his home with evidence of trauma. Nobody knows for sure how he died, but we do know that all his legal papers on my case are missing. And our defense team HQ has been broken into and some papers stolen. And now Harper, the state trooper you supposedly shot and injured, now says he saw no such thing, but is saying he did not lie. Just an untruth. <laughs> no gun residue was found on my fingers. I had not had, handled, or fired a gun at him. Lawyers urge me to testify, to get on record. I am innocent. But I'm told I can't mention being a fugitive or the political scenario that put me there and... If you don't participate, we can't get on record medical testimony that says you were shot in the back with your hands raised in the air. We can get nothing on record. I want to back out. Denounce the trial completely. But it's too late. I hold on to a picture of my small child, Kukuya, who has been and is being raised by my mother. I take the stand. Welcome to Alderson Maximum Security Prison for Women, West Virginia. We hope you enjoy your long stay. Now strip, squat, shower, you know the drill. March 1977. This prison is designed to hold the most dangerous women in the country my home for my life sentence plus 33 years. My mother brings Kakuya, my child, to see me every week wherever I am incarcerated. Kakuya's four-year-old self eyes me. Guilt and sorrow fill my chest. Tears swell her eyes. I go to hug her. All right, baby. All right. Her four-year-old fists pummel into me as I hold on to her. She cries. 
saying well. simply, mm -hmm. open the bars. Mm -hmm. I can't, a whisper. You can if you want to, she says, her eyes not leaving mine. Kukuya, baby. You can. You just don't want to, she says. You try, baby, because Mama can't do it. Setting her down, she pulls, pushes, kicks, and hits those metal doors and bars. She tries and tries. She cries, she cries. I kiss her, I rock her. I cry with her holding her close. Visiting hours are over. Visiting hours are over. Head high. Kukuya looks back at me as she leaves the prison, looking like a four-year-old adult. I go back to my cage, and I cry until I vomit. In 1973, I was arrested. In 1977, I was convicted. In 1979, I escaped. I am in hiding for five years, and in 1984, I am in Cuba. My name is Asada Shakur, and I was born and raised in the United States. I am a descendant of Africans who were kidnapped and brought to the Americas as slaves. I spent my early childhood in the racist, segregated South. I grew up and became a political activist, participating in student struggles, the anti-war movement, and most of all, in the movement for the liberation of African Americans in the United States. I advocate an end to capitalist exploitation, the abolition of racist policies, the eradication of sexism, and the elimination of political repression. The New Jersey State Police, the New Jersey Attorney General's Office, and the United States Marshal for the District of New Jersey announced the addition of Joanne Chesimard to the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. While living openly and freely in Cuba, she continues to maintain and promote her terrorist ideology. She provides anti-U.S. government speeches espousing the Black Liberation Army message of revolution and terrorism. Joanne Chesimard is a domestic terrorist who murdered a law enforcement officer, execution style. I was captured in New Jersey in 1973 after being shot with both arms held in the air and then shot again from the back. I was kept in solitary confinement for more than two years, mostly in men's prisons. I was tried by an all-white jury without even the pretext of impartiality and then sentenced to life in prison plus 33 years. Is that justice? Through the assistance of criminal forfeiture funds, we are raising the reward from $1 million to $2 million for the successful apprehension of this convicted murderer. Let me emphasize that justice for me is not the issue I am addressing here. It is justice for my people that is at stake. When my people receive justice, I am sure that I will receive it too.